Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my November Altered Tag Challenge from the Pick a Stick Challenge Facebook group. Uh, this one I missed because I lost half of November <laughs> and um, so I'm just, I'm catching up. So the first thing is the color and the color is plum and I decided to use a tag um, these are shipping tags, Manila shipping tags, that already had some plum color on it in acrylic paint. Sometimes when I am messing around with my gel plate or other things, I will use these shipping tags to kind of clean up extra paint because I don't want to waste it or uh, clean up um, my gel plate with them and I just have a bunch of them that have paint on them already. So I picked this one because it had that plumish color and some interesting kind of grungy pattern on it, uh, crusty bits from the gel plate. And I, uh, the, the plate that I had cleaned up uh, obviously was smaller than the tag. It was like a three by four or whatever little gel plate. So I needed to fill up the rest of the space. So I used some white gesso, some uh, lavender color and some darker purple color to fill in the rest of the space and I used my finger which happens to be the wild card but I didn't I didn't uh, note that but I guess I used the wild card as well as the four steps. For altered tag there are four steps um, you do them in order plus a color and so the first um, the first step one is polyphila which is is the generic name for molding or modeling paste so I grabbed a stencil. I, I thought well, what I'm doing with these tags is um, I'm going to use them for uh, gift giving in this holiday season. And so I'm going to be going on a trip very soon where I'm taking some presents and I wanted to make some special tags to go on the presents that I'm going to take with me uh, for these people. So I'm going to do the December one as the December tag as well for the same purpose soon <laughs> because I'm going soon it's this week so I wanted to make it look like snow I wanted you know these cut co this color reminds me of snowy winter scenes uh, so I'm putting on the polyfilla with a palette knife through a stencil to give kind of this snowy look but I wanted to leave us an area open because I have this this page that someone sent me that's like an old illustration um, you know old and vintage and kind of funky and cool illustration and I wanted to use the two characters that are on the illustration for my two tags that I'm going to make the November one and the December one so I cut out this curvy girl and the second prompt was curve and so I figured a curvy girl would um, satisfy that prompt. It's a black and white illustration. I cut it out carefully and then I'm, I'm going to collage her onto the tag and her arm is sticking out so I just went ahead and cut it off and then brought it back in so that she could have her arm um, with her hand on her hip and that way all that cutting around all those little tiny fingers didn't go to waste because <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it about it fitting on the tag when I was cutting it out and there's some pretty fussy cutting so I figured her arm could come back in I'm applying this piece down to the tag and of course I dried the modeling paste first with a heat tool but I didn't make you sit there and watch me dry modeling paste You'd go crazy if you had to do that. So I'm using matte medium and a fluid to stick this down and adding that little arm back in and sticking everything down, making sure it's all stuck down. Um, there is a little bit of bumpiness in a couple areas because I didn't quite gauge the blank space that I would need very well. And then I looked back at my list and the next prompt three was trowel, which is, you know, a big palette knife. And the next prompt after that was circle. And I'm like, well, I need to fill in the rest of this background with my modeling paste, which uses a palette knife. And this stencil that I picked just randomly, which happens to be circles. <laughs> so I just, just uh, 
you know, f fix that without even thinking. I mean, I was going to do it anyway. I didn't have to think about those two prompts, which I thought was kind of funny. So I'm cleaning up with the, the palette knife to make sure that the, that the modeling paste is only where I want it. You can kind of scrape it off before it's dry. And there's three different size circles on this little stencil, this little four by four stencil. Um, a larger one, a medium one, and little tiny ones. So I'm using those here and there to fill in the rest of the background. And then I wanted to bring in another color. And so I got out a circle punch and a star punch. And I have this kind of frosty blue color and some purple. And I think those two go, go together really well, the purple and the frosty blue. I think that's a really cool combination, aqua and purple or whatever. So I punch out some little pieces to um, glue on there and I'm again using the matte medium and the fluid to glue these down. I'm almost out of it and I keep having to smack it against my palette to try to get it out. <laughs> it probably shakes the camera, but that's what you do when you have, you're very low on stuff. I also need some gesso, need to order a couple things. So putting those down in the background, making sure that they're pressed down. Of course, I'm going over some bumpy areas, and so I have to make sure that everything is really pressed down. But I just thought I would do a little bit more collage. Maybe this step wasn't really necessary, but I just wanted to fill in the background a little bit more. Then I need to add color to my illustration now that it's fairly dry. And so I'm going to use ink tense pencils. These pencils, uh, you color with them like color pencils, and then once you activate them with water and they're dry, they become permanent, they become like an ink. And so they're a great mixed media product. I'm using a couple different colors, kind of a turquoise color and then a blue color over the top. I don't think I've got the blue out yet, but um, coloring, you know, the, the illustration is already shaded, so I don't need to worry about that. It's already got its shadows and highlights in it because it's a, like a pen and ink illustration. And so I'm coloring the, the hardest part of coloring on the darkest parts where the shadowing is and then blending it out with a water brush to um, give highlight and shadow and folds and, and creases to her dress. She's wearing kind of a shirt dress that buttons down the front, it's kind of like a man's shirt, but then it's a dress in an kind of A-line skirt, which was popular. Um, I don't know when. I never had one. So it was before my time, maybe maybe the 60s or 50s. I'm not sure. Her hairstyle. Um, and then in the illustration, there's also a man that I'm going to use on the tag I'm going to do for December. And he's wearing a smoking jacket and a, and a, a caravette. Car ca I don't know if that's a French word caravet or caravette scarf <laughs> like they're they're just so uh it's just a funny illustration of vintagey cool i don't know how to describe it retro i guess retro and re uh, retro things are in this year um like all the different art deco shapes and the different um atomic age shapes that came out in stencils and stuff this year so of course the year's just about over and in February we'll get all new stuff but it's still on trend to use these little retro illustrations so I color in her hair with a couple different colors and then I'm looking for something in my um, pencils that looks like a skin tone it didn't really have a lot they were too yellow but I think this is the set of maybe 36 pencils. There are larger sets and maybe there's a skin tone in a larger set, but this one didn't have much of a skin tone. So I kind of blended some pink and some ochre sort of color together to get a skin tone for her face and hands. And then I added some pinkish colors to lips and um, cheeks as if she's wearing a little bit of makeup. This per this person in this age probably would have been wearing a pretty bright colored lipstick and maybe not a lot else, not a lot of eyeshadow and things, but 
definitely a lipstick. Maybe uh, false eyelashes. So then I put a little bit of Posca, white Posca pen ink onto my paper and picked it up with my water brush to kind of highlight a few areas that had gotten a little bit muddy. Add the highlights back in to make it more dynamic. And I do end up actually using the pen straight after a bit as well to just do kind of illustrative highlights. The next thing that I do is to get out a kind of a dark gray or taupe type of color to do some shadows just around the outer edge of the things that I glued on. This always helps to make them blend in a little bit. Some people don't do this, but I pretty much always do because I just think it looks better. And that's a um, pit artist brush pen. That's um, something that's permanent as well. It's got India ink inside of it. I like to use permanent products most often with my mixed media because I never know when I'm going to put another layer on top and I don't want things to smear after I've put them on. So the ink tints and the Fabric Castel uh, brush pens are great things to, do, to use for mixed media. If you're planning on getting some of these products for yourself for Christmas or asking for Christmas, um, I have a link to my Amazon store down below the video. It's an affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything to use that link. It just takes you to Amazon and you can find the products that you want and then buy them. And I get a small portion of a cent <laughs> for each thing that you buy. It doesn't have to be art things either. It can be anything. If you just use that link, I would be very appreciative of that because it helps me so that I can buy, you know, some more gesso and some uh, fluid matte medium and things like that. So now I have my white Posca pen fine tip out and I am drawing snowflake type shapes over the top of my stars and circles that I glued on there with the white because they were supposed to be snowflakes. And so I just drew over the top of them with snowflakes shapes. Truly, really trying to bring out the whole, this is a snowstorm. This is a lady in this in a snowstorm. <laughs> so what did I do next? Oh, I needed to get a backing um, cardstock color. It's kind of a plum color backing for this project. But before I do that, I'm going to do some dry brushing with silver. I'm using kind of a stencil brush and picking up just a little bit of silver paint and going over the um, places where the molding paste is. And if you are, have a light touch, you can get the raised areas to pick up that paint. It makes it just a little bit shiny and shimmery like snow would be. Then I'm going to glue that to my backing cardstock with some Aliens Tacky Glue, making sure that I spread out the glue so I don't get any lumps or bumps with my finger. Of course, then I get glue all over my fingers. Um, I did put on some Art Guard lotion to protect my hands. You should do that if you're going to get your hands into stuff, which I do all the time. So I pretty much put that on all the time or else gloves. So once that's on, I trim the corners, punch the hole, and then I'm going to get some different little ribbons and fibers to put through the hole. I also am going to put on a label for the person's name who this is going to go on their package for Christmas. Oh, and I also want some stick-on gems just to make it a little bit more... I don't know, shiny, <laughs> more bling. These were laying on my table and I thought those would match. So I stuck them on there. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bells if you haven't been getting notifica notificated, notificated <laughs> my videos. And of course you can pin this on Pinterest or share it on Facebook. 
And all those things, everything that you do that I just listed helps people find my videos who haven't found me yet. My subscription rate has gone uh, down about 50% and I don't know if that has something to do with the algorithm or just not as many people are finding me or not as many people are interested in what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, you know, they keep giving you these statistics and then you have to look at them and yeah, maybe I should just avoid the statistics. <laughs> anyway, that is it for my November Pick a Stick Challenge altered tag and the December one will be coming up in a couple days. Here comes your close-ups. Thanks. Bye-bye.